For the last 80 years, Stony Point has been a place where many people get their first taste of climbing. And that tradition continues today as a new generation filters through the point for the very first time. I've been climbing at Stony Point for about a year and a half. We all started together, so. I started a year and a half ago and haven't been able to stop since, so. I like it. Back in the day, Dimitri, when we used to fold with no pads, and no spawning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pads, no spawning. It's, it's an overlapping thing. The generations are overlapping, you know? It's, it's not one generation here, and then the young guys come in, and all of a sudden it's like, you're retired, here's the new guys. It's, it, it, it's overlapping, it's all together. It, it, they, they like flow with each other, so you get these guys and there's like a chain of respect almost. Like you, you know this guy knows more than you, you listen to him. Explode, come on! Twice your guys' age and you got nothing. <laughs> And the girls say that all the boys, young boys, have stamina and power. Oh. Okay, down, down. Yeah. More and more, I just am really psyched for what climbing is to so many people. You know, and they do see it as a thing of respecting the earth and celebrating life. And I still think that the deep down inside it's that it's the physicalness of it, of hanging on hard and really trying to do something. And once you become wrapped up in really wanting to do a problem, you know, when you're sitting around your house thinking about it, you know, <laughs> it can get under your skin. And after like a couple months, you know, and you come and you, you know, succeed on it, you see that you're getting better. I think it gets you hooked, it gets you hooked on the sport, and it maybe shows you something about yourself that you that you like to, to have that feeling go on and on and on. You know, like down there, those guys are having fun. You know. And, and I, I, they've probably only been climbing like this is it, you know, their first day. And uh, they're getting the adrenaline going, you know. That's what I like about it. Well, Guy represents how the majority of his generation feels about the next, Jan represents a slightly crustier opinion. I, I think a lot of the difference between my generation and the current generation that's starting to climb is, is the current generation just doesn't have the balls that we have. Not willing to put yourself out there in, in risk. You're willing to pull hard. You're probably not willing to train as hard either. Um, we trained really hard. But I do see um, an obsession with numbers and grades instead of just enjoying the experience of being out here in nature. Because that's what climbing is all about and having good times with your friends. While the majority of Stony Point's worthy climbs have already been established, occasionally a new top rope or boulder problem is claimed. But due to Stony's long history of capable climbers, it's almost impossible to know for sure if what you've done is a first. Local young gun Daniel Valkili is constantly on the lookout for new lines. Recently, he established what he thought might be Stony's newest boulder problem. <laughs> Okay, so this power glide, right? I mean, okay. Um, this power glide, I mean, one of the most classic problems here at Stony Point. I mean, everybody does it, and you can see it from a mile away, and, you know, being here all the time, I've done it so many times, and it's in such an established area, and I was just, I was just there one day with some guys, and I thought to myself, I wonder, you know, if, if maybe some of these holds weren't here, if, if there would be a problem that goes up on, like, some of the patina and, you know, the rock that, is just naturally there that goes straight up from the starting holds. I didn't know if it was possible or not because I, I was under the impression again that it had never been done and I was going to call it powerhouse, it was going to be awesome and I just got on it one day and it went. Um, which of course, I mean after I sent it I, figured, I was told by wiser men than myself that it was in fact an old Lynn Hill problem so I mean, I don't know if it, if it was or if, if she exactly topped out the way I did or if the problem was even the same, but I mean, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. I mean, I, I can't talk to her and ask her, but assuming that she did do this before I did, I probably got the first male ascent. So one of many rare first male ascents. <laughs>
Every Tuesday and Thursday, a core group of locals get together after work to talk shit, drink beer, and sometimes even climb. This tradition dates back longer than anyone can remember, and new members are always welcome. Well, I think the Tuesday Thursday group is fantastic. I mean, I, I started climbing here when I was uh, in, I think, like sixth grade. You know, I was just a little kid, and so I met most of the old timers, um, Guy Kesey, Jim Wilson, Bob Camps. I met all the regular Tuesday Thursday guys when I was just a little kid, and they really had a huge impact on my climbing style and technique and development. Initially, a top rope Tuesday was something that we started like when the seasons change, like it starts in spring, and we go until it gets about too hot. But every Tuesday, and I'll set up as many top ropes. I got four ropes, and other people bring more ropes, and we just set up the whole backside, set up a canyon, set up something that you know somebody hasn't done in a long time, you know, and you got to sit there and tinker with it and figure it out. Top rope Tuesday is great. Oh shit. So I think it's a it's a great place on Tuesdays and Thursdays to come and these guys are just a wealth of knowledge and stories and experience. I don't think in Southern California you can get this kind of experience, this kind of knowledge um, anywhere else. I don't know how much of a mentor. I mean, you know, I like to take cl people climbing. I don't mind spending the time to introduce someone to the outdoors. Guy was really the, the first one to, to teach me the basics of of anchoring and, and belaying and to really teach me, you know, that climbing's a little more than bouldering. I find that that's always the, the real fun part is like when you can kind of show someone and it's just like, you, it's like you introduce, you introduce them to like something like the, a crack climbing or something, you know, and then they just take it and you see that they just they have such a good time with it. That makes you feel good. Guy was definitely the one who taught me how to not die. If it wasn't for Guy, if it wasn't for Guy, we'd still be using computer printouts to tie our knots. <laughs> In a world of mutant strength gym climbers and double digit boulder problems, Stony Point might not seem like much more than an antiquated choss pile on the side of the road. Yet despite its urban setting, there's something undeniably special about this place that builds strong climbers and a tight community. This place has had such influence on so many people over time and you know it's always been a special and magic place even though it kind of sometimes feels kind of urban and a little bit ghetto at times, it's still, you know, it's not hard to get away and find yourself in a peaceful, tranquil spot, and you're just amazed at how close this is to the city, yet it's so wonderful. TM Herbert told me we were at the number one boulder at Camp's Memorial. Don Loria is standing there, Mike Sherrick, Half Dome, uh, Mark Powell, Dave Rarick, his wife. And they're talking about Bob, and he looked at me, he goes, Banny, this is where it started. He points to the ground at our feet at the number one boulder. He goes, this is where Southern California climbing started. You know, the stories that go through this place and what was started here, it's like mythology. It's, it's basically like modern mythology here to me. It's amazing when you um, look at the history of climbing and you see how many people actually learned all the foundations of climbing out here at Stony Point and then went onward to other places, really all over the world, to go climbing. This place is probably the best all-around training climbing area, you know, not just for bouldering, but you know, you want to go do bigger and better things. This place will really train you. Fantastic place to hone your skills, plain and simple, novice to expert. 
Tony Point has always been a place where people, someone will always come and say, hey, try this, you know, hey, try that. People will always share. There's always, always someone will, you know, help you with something. The people who rock climb are like some of the chillest people I know, you know? It's easy to become friends with them because you already have something in common to like bring you together. What makes Stony like home and in, in my heart to me is like it's where I started climbing and you know and on top of that I've always like read the history books of climbing areas and Stony Point has the who's who of climbers. Stony Point seemed like a dusty pile of sandstone rocks to me then but now it's become kind of a love affair and I'd hate to leave the place because it's just got so much rich history and I've, I've been on so many climbs here over the years that uh, it is my backyard of climbing. I think as, as long as Stony Point's here, people will be, will be climbing here and I think it, it will always be something that, that climbers in LA do, that they go to Stony Point, especially in the evenings and meet other people. I, I, I don't see that role diminishing in any way for Stony Point. I, I think it'll, it'll be here long after we've gone and new people will be coming here and climbing long after we've gone. Well, what makes Stony Point special to me is, is the feeling and the camaraderie I get with the fellow climbers who are, you know, into the same addiction that I'm at. Stony Point, I mean, this is it. This is the place we come to. So it's sort of the, like the, the center or the rock or the building or whatever that I share something with friends. And it's the camaraderie and the friendship you get and meeting new people. And... When you go climbing with somebody, you rely on them. It's life and death at times. And so you become really, really good friends. Um, and Stony Point's a place to cement that friendship, to, to share, to, to have all that camaraderie, and to ruthlessly pick on each other in, in a way that, you know, only good friends can. That's what makes Stony Point so great. You got community, you got history, and you got hard climbing.